guest on profession versus passion is very unique. What he does for a living versus what he is passionate about are oceans apart. His passion is very deep, yet it is as clear as water. Too cryptic? Well, let's just say that it is connected to the national game of India and has got something to do with swimming. Welcome to Z Connect. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Great. How are you today? Well, you know what? Really excited. Got underwater hockey tonight, so I'm all pumped, ready for the game. Super. We're just getting around to talking about <laughs> that. But before that, Phil, tell me, what do you do for a living? So I'm, what I'm into what we call entrepreneurial development. Okay. So uh, most of us know entrepreneurs who start their own business, mm -hmm. but many people don't know how to run a business. So we work with those new business owners and show them how they can grow the business, scale the business, and not make all the mistakes that mm -hmm. cause them to fail in business. I think that's wonderful because a lot of new businesses need that kind of help and uh, you know counseling to, to know how to not fail. But tell me, Phil, how did you get around to start doing something like this? Um, I think like most people, I actually came out of a job. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked for a big company. Um, and I'd on the side started my own businesses. So I was teaching salsa, started to do kite surfing. So I started my own businesses on the side. And then gradually transitioned into working for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'd been kind of talent spotted in this world of what we call entrepreneurial marketing. Yeah. There's an international franchise called Ascentive. Uh, they'd seen me around and they asked me if I'd be interested in taking on the master for the GCC mm -hmm. and for South India. So took that leap and it became a big part of what I do. Phil, uh, this is a very interesting job that you've got, but uh, you've got even more interesting passions on the side that you live every day. Tell me about those. Well, do you know what? I think at the end of the day, a lot of us work to enjoy our free time. And uh, I've always been big into sport. And I, I've taught salsa now for over 26 years. That's one of my hobbies. Um, and I know I don't look like it, but I give people hope. If I can dance, anyone can. <laughs> and, um, and my other is underwater hockey. So I've been playing underwater hockey since uh, I was a kid, uh, since about 18. And uh, I do other things like uh, triathlon. I'm an Ironman. Um, Trust me, Phil, uh, ever since I've heard that term underwater hockey, I've been wondering what it's all about. There are people I've met and I've told them, you know what, uh, one of these days I'm interviewing this guy who does underwater hockey and they're like, what? Yeah, what even is that? You're joking, right? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Phil, what is underwater hockey? Well, it's actually been around since 1954, so it's not even a new sport. Mm -hmm. It's just not very well known. Uh, and the big challenge is underwater hockey is played on the bottom of a swimming pool. So as you can imagine, it's not a spectator sport, yeah. and so hence doesn't lot to generate a lot of sponsorship or interest from outside. Yeah. It's basically six people on a team. Okay. It's played on the bottom of a pool, mm -hmm. and the ball is very much like an ice hockey puck. So it sinks to the bottom of the pool. Okay. Each of the players wears a mask, snorkel, and fins. Mm -hmm. And so what makes the game tough is you have to hold your breath, go underwater, and score in the opposition's goal, all while holding your breath my kind of sport at all <laughs> I don't even know how to swim <laughs> but yeah I'd like to learn someday because it sounds very interesting they're actually playing a sport underwater holding their breath and do and and I, I think there are also championships and leagues around this sport absolutely there's um, I mean we're knocking on the door of the Olympics as a sport we're trying to get in the Olympics uh, but there's a world championships uh, in Asia we've just been accepted into the sea games which is huge um, so yeah I mean they said it's it's an elite sport the people that do it at high level are elite athletes yeah. and it's just you know how do we grow this fantastic sport in the UAE that's that's my goal uh, tell me so underwater hockey when did you start I was I think I first tried, played when my dad was a diver I was 15 uh, so a long time ago yeah. and uh, I played them briefly when I was 18 at university, I got involved at a higher level. So I, tr I did international games in South Africa and, and that. And then I didn't play again for 20 years. I kind of gave up. And about two years ago, we were approached by somebody internationally who was looking at running a tournament in Dubai. Okay. There was a team coming in from Saudi Arabia and they wanted to develop a tournament. Um, through Facebook, mm -hmm. someone said, hey, does anyone play hockey? And a couple of people jumped up. 
suddenly we had five people and then off it went. Within about six months, we had a tournament with nine international teams here uh, at uh, the Hamdan Center. We had a bit, they're coming in from the United States, from Germany, from Singapore, China. Right. But a massive tournament and the sport was born here. Wow, so, so you just got back into it uh, a while ago with this, uh, you know, with these guys approaching you. So now how do you keep it going? Do you like kind of practice every week, weekend? Yeah, we play every Monday night at the moment. So once, once a week at the moment uh, with everyone's schedules. Uh, and of course, like any, it's almost like running a business, oddly enough. You know, you have to market it. You have to let people know it exists because no, nobody's looking for underwater yeah. hockey. You know, they'll look for cricket, they'll look for football. So you have to educate them that you exist first and then you have to have people. So the awareness and you got it, right? It. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, with, with things like this help us get knowledge out there. And then it's just inviting people down to give it a go and see if they like it. Right, and have you managed to get people? Yeah, we have a, we have a flow of people in. And what, uh, who better than uh, you to start a business? You know how to coach yourself on growing that business and making it work. So I'm sure you will be successful. In thank you. you try to do. Well, thank you so much, Phil. It's been wonderful talking to you. We'll see you inside the pool. You will. <laughs> okay, guys, so here we are at the pool, as promised. If you just look around, you see some of the guys getting in the pool ready. I mean, one of our goals here, really, is to put the UAE on the map globally. How do we represent the UAE on the, in the World Championships. So, you know, we're out there looking for kids, we're looking for ladies to play, multiple nationalities. In fact, I've got one of my friends here that I know from my salsa network, and he's uh, been in underwater hockey. Absolutely. Momo, come here, mate. Just t tell the guys why you, why you love hockey and what you do. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Momo, or MJ. Uh, so basically, I started one year ago, and uh, it feels really good to be in the water. I used to do uh, competitive uh, swimming, so this is a little bit more challenging, and you're underwater. Uh, the breathing is uh, great, and it just makes you feel good, and uh, you get a good night's sleep. But, you know, competitive swimmers, free divers, divers, just people that love being in the water, we'd love to see you down and help us grow this fantastic sport and get fit while you're at it.